Hello, everyone. Welcome to Conversations with Sarah. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, today is Thursday, April, April 16th, 2020. And uh, we are here with Guru Dan. Hello. Holly and Crystal. Thank you for liking and sharing and uh, subscribing to the videos. And uh, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you every time we have an event. So much love and namaste to you all. Uh, today, we have an open topic again. So whoever would like to start first. Holly, do you have anything on your mind or Kimmy? If you have anything on your mind you would like to discuss today? Dan? Well, I can talk about all kinds of things. Oh, what would you like to talk about? Well, I don't know. You're there. Well, Kimmy's finally popped in. Let's see what Kimmy's got going on. Hi. Hi. Um, so, um, I guess maybe you guys could share your experience with like changes and going through um, things that are I don't know, I guess better for your soul. Um, so I'm like moving into a house and I'm like leaving a relationship and um, trying to get healthy. And um, it's, been a, it's been a struggle. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, think, if you guys have anything to talk about that, that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, my one advice. Well, wow, you just muted, you just lost audio. I was like, no, she just started talking. Yep, she just started talking and lost audio, and now she's frozen. Are you back? No. Breathe through it all. Moving to a new place. Hey, Sarah, can... stop and repeat everything you just said. I would say take it one step at a time and breathe through it all. Because yes, yeah, thank you. That's a lot to have on your plate. So. Just moving along could give anxiety, but if you breathe through it, put on some music, <laughs> you know, dance through it, it, it changes the entire scope and thought and emotional capacity about it. So just take it one step at a time. And the others that you mentioned, you know, you choose what's right for your heart. And when you make that choice that your heart sings towards, uh, you'll never go wrong. And I'm speaking- Jimmy, I wanted to share. Go I'm ahead. sorry, Sarah, go ahead. Go ahead, Holly. Go ahead, Holly. I, I just wanted to share with, with Jimmy that I've done the same thing. I walked away from my reptilian husband on New Year's Eve and never looked back. So same same thing, whole new environment, leaving a, a long-term relationship, completely changing everything in my life. So I can certainly sympathize with you. It is definitely a process and it takes time to acclimate to these whole new frequencies that you set yourself into which i'm sure you followed you, your heart as i did like sarah said which was the appropriate thing to do in this time so i'll mute now yes i Thank would you. add to that that it's it's also a really good a really good experience to learn your own self-trust even though it's weird you can trust yourself so think oh this is so strange and this is so uh out of my comfort zone and and i, I would challenge that and I'd go is it really is it really out of your comfort zone is it really that far out because if you're doing what you know is the greater good for you and you're not trusting your own greater good for you then oh Maybe we are trusting our own greater good for us. We're just so used to not doing it that it feels foreign to us. So what's really going on is you're just 
we're so used to mistrusting even ourselves. But now you have this great opportunity where you're challenging that and go, oh, I kind of really do trust myself and I do believe in my greater good and I do trust that this is all going to be okay. And yeah, of course it's different. And of course it's weird because I'm doing something for me instead of whatever else we would normally be doing or whatever other programming we would be running. So doing something for ourselves for our own better good and then trusting it and go, oh, yeah, we are doing, we are doing the right thing. So we're programmed to second guess so many things, but maybe we shouldn't second guess during a time like this when you're transitioning from, from one thing that you thought was good to a greater good, because it was good until it wasn't, and now it's going to be good again. It's just not good yet. So you're in this really weird kind of flux, but, um, when the process stabilizes and solidifies a little bit more, once you, you know, get the down payment into the place and actually start moving and the change becomes more real, I think then the trust will solidify as well. And you go, Oh, you really are doing the right thing and you can trust yourself and it's going to be all right. So it's a pretty neat place to be in because it's so exciting. There's all this weird stuff you get to go through. Like I say, weird doesn't always, weird's not always the enemy. Sometimes weird is your friend. Yes, and weird is exciting as well. Change. But weird can be exciting. exciting. Yeah. It may not feel like it in the moment, but you'll find that you will begin to have all of these new experiences and new thoughts and new emotions and say, wow you know, my life has changed. And those are a lot of changes. And so you will gain an appreciation for the change. You will discover more of who you are in that stage of change. So um, you just breathe into it every step of the way. Yeah, to know, does my yeah. heart agree with this? Yeah, I think your heart does. It's just Am I are... following my own intentions for myself? And if you say yes, you take another step forward. Breathe again. Feel. Agree and take another step. <laughs> That's all you can do at this point until you can feel yourself become a happier you. So yeah, it's, it's an exciting time. It can be a little scary, but exciting at the same time. So I actually congratulate you for doing so many changes all at one time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, um, I am getting really excited and it was very helpful what you guys said, so thank you, appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes. Holly, did you have anything else to add or uh, did you have something to speak about today? <laughs> well, not at the moment, but I may chime in in a little bit. Okay. I'm going to get situated in the house and then I'll, I'll get back with you. Lovely. But I'll be listening. Okay. I'm going to have to break off for a couple of minutes, but I will be back in a little bit. Okay. I'm going to go um, give the new person um, money for their house. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll be back in a little bit though. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, well, a discussion I wanted to talk about today is meditation on how many ways we can meditate. And um, we have a question over here from Crystal before we go into the topic of meditation. When each of you started noticing changes, how did you respond? Did you welcome it at first or was there a any tre trepidation? Well, 
<laughs> I know with my idea of change, usually my idea of change is uh, jump over a cliff. <laughs> and uh, usually they are huge and major changes, uh, like uh, going to another country or following my highest excitement in changing who I thought I was and didn't know which steps to take. So basically, I went through a stage where I had to do a lot of meditation. When there are changes that can affect you in all of who you believe you are, the best thing to do is to just go out into nature and be with yourself. And that's what really helps me out with major changes. Um, and even though a change may seem a little scary, you'll find that you'll welcome it because it's better than the alternative choice that you were in before. So uh, I tend to welcome changes with open arms now, but at first, when I first began my inner discovery of my spiritual self, change was very hard. But as I began to connect to myself more and more and more, I began following the steps that I knew would make me happier in moving forward in whatever direction I decide to take. So after a while, you begin to become used to the frequencies of change within yourself first. And then the outside world will begin to become smoother for you as you begin to choose the changes that you wish to make for yourself. Does that make any sense? Dan, Holly, Crystal? Yeah, well, yeah, makes sense to me. Yeah. So it takes its time and uh, you know, it could take you anywhere between a week to a year or more to accept certain changes. But as you go along, they become smoother and smoother and easier to take. So, uh, <laughs> and then you'll become like me to, you know, you jump off a cliff. You'll be happy to jump off a cliff at any point in time. <laughs> <laughs> and make those big changes for your life. So, yeah, just take it one step at a time. <laughs> Crystal, do you have anything else uh, to add or um, want to share with that? And she's probably typing on the side. But yeah, it becomes easier. Okay, so um, I wanted to discuss the topic of meditation. So the first question is, how do we meditate? Anybody want to share how they meditate? Holly, Dan, Crystal? I'll let Holly go first. If she's free to go first. Hmm. She's not answering, so uh, might be tied up then. Yeah, Crystal says, when each of you started noticing changes, how did you respond? Did you welcome it at first, or was there any yeah. trepidation? And you got that already? Yeah. I wanted to know um, what are the ways in which you meditate, Dan? That was the question. All right. Um, well, there's lots of things that are meditation. I, I find meditation in lots of things. Um, it doesn't always have to be the traditional idea of meditation, which is what I would not always, you know, prescribe. You don't always have to just go sit under a tree, although sitting under a tree is nice if you have a nice tree to sit under, but you can meditate in all kinds of places. I know people who Meditated traffic lights or washing the dishes or playing video games or having conversation is a type of, you know, even these are a form of meditation. Even these conversations are 
uh, room where we can expand and, and wonder and ponder and uh, but in delightful ways, not always um, not always um, traditional. Yeah. Yeah. Here, Crystal says um, they like to constant uh, get in, find a quiet spot, and uh, concentrate on breastwork. Sometimes music, sometimes not. Sometimes guided, free, free flowing thoughts. I was concentrating on breathing. Yeah, the breath is important, and the breath is powerful. Actually, you can. Um, I know some of the best uh, meditative uh, experiences I've had are, are doing uh, interesting breath work, like breathing in and out of a chakra or breathing from a different place um called consciously breathing so most people consciously breathe from like their chest but you can consciously breathe from anywhere i know when i'm traveling i like to breathe through my feet consciously breathe through my feet so breathe up the energy from the road up through my feet and then out the top of my head and man i can get in some really great grounded energy you know just traversing across the planet which is fine for me because i don't listen to the radio or anything when i'm driving if i'm driving i just go and it's just there's always plenty for me to do and there's always new energies to run into and you can just kind of feel your way through it and i find that more enjoyable than listening to the radio sometimes so did that answer any question i don't know i hope it did, yeah, it did. <laughs> okay it's all right really interesting the concept of breathing through your feet yeah because you breathe up through your feet you breathe up yeah. the energy through your feet and then bring it up through your whole body and out the top of your head and just let it go to infinity right and just and just keep doing that and it'd be amazing how good you can feel you can energize yourself that way when you're fatigued like say you've been driving you know eight or ten hours or whatever and I'm, they tell you not to drive that long but people do it all the time mm -hmm. you get fatigued and you can start grounding yourself start doing these weird breathing exercises and you can get so grounded to the planet you become alert yes. and you think wow <laughs> meditation could you know be a safety tool right Right. But you can get so grounded and become so alert and just be aware of everything. So, oh, this is so nice. Wow, well, we lost yeah. Kimmy for a second. That's okay. Because when she yeah. comes back, I wanted to let her know about this this other thing. Mm -hmm. about it reminds me of when I cycle energy through my body. And literally, my feet start acting like they're... Uh... <laughs> Tingly and alive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My hands and my feet start playing the piano and the energy goes down my feet to ground into the earth. And it's so funny because um, I don't perceive it as breathing through the feet or breathing through the crown. I just perceive it as energy flowing, whether it's downward and going around in circles. It's like a cyclical idea or coming upward and going around in circles or even just like pulsating outwards in circles so it's it's interesting how this circular movement of energy is a constant uh picture for me so i literally see myself grounding as you say it, it feels like you're breathing through your 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 head or breathing through your feet but i feel it as cyclical energetic movement no it's bi-directional right so it's like a yeah, tube right. or a straw yeah. uh, it's, there's it's whatever descriptive water. word you want to use so <laughs> your your primary spirit energy your spirit cord runs up and down through your spine Mm -hmm. So it comes down, if it's coming from the top, it comes down through the center of your head and down your spine. Yeah, so it, and yeah, then it goes, and it goes out your tailbone or thereabouts your tailbone area. And, and that's the, yeah. the primary area of energy. And when I'm working with that, it's like a tube or a straw where, um, you know, like the inside, the inside of the tube will be going one direction and the outside of the tube, the energy is going another direction and it's just this equal balancing force. So you do a wax on, wax off type of situation. Kind of, yeah, <laughs> where, where, where it's, where it's bi-directional. Yeah, so it's, um, 
So it's uh, it's coming up as much as it's going down, and you, you just um, can sit there mm -hmm. and just let it all flow through. And so um, you can get into um, a straight pose, or sometimes they call it a trance pose, yes, where you can just that. kind of subtly move yourself around. So say you're sitting in a chair or you're seated, and you can just kind of wiggle around a little bit and find like the energetic center, like your, your, your seat is seated down into the chair and, and you can just wiggle just a little bit and find the energetic center. And then just once you find that energetic center, just stay in alignment with that. And then you can close your eyes if you want to and just sit there. So when you see people meditating, they, they got their legs crossed or not, or they got whatever, they got their hands out in a pose or not, yes, or whatever, they however they are. But you can just, when they're just sitting completely still, this is what they're doing. They're aligning, they're, they're feeling that there's anything, that energy, uh, until it's just perfectly straight and smooth and free flowing. And that's all they're doing. Yeah. They're just sitting there, allowing that energy to flow. And you can sit there kind of like, I don't know, like a capacitor of, of sorts, right? And, and you're flowing and, and you can decide to amplify that energy or not amplify or have very little to do with that energy. Or you could drift even away. Your thoughts might take you somewhere on a journey. They might not. You might decide to not allow thought and just follow breathing. Um, any number of things. So it doesn't, I guess that would be a big part about meditation. Meditation does not have to be hard. No, it's not, it's it's not a huge um, mental process. It's actually the lack of mental process, which is yes. what's made it famous. It's you, you get into that energetic straight line and you just sit there and you breathe. And you can call it meditation or you could call it soaking in your own existence or whatever you want to do it, but you're aligning yourself with all the natural energies of you and your surroundings. And it's just like, oh, well, what if I don't like my surroundings? Well, you can still get into this space, even if your surroundings aren't so great. Um, there are famous, absolutely famous stories of people who have been imprisoned and through their confinement mastered all kinds of meditation and that they wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for the confinement. Yeah. And they have learned an awful lot of stuff and, and they have figured out all kinds of things. They, they found out, you know, the, all the properties of light. They found out all the properties, you know, they found all kinds of spiritual experiences and just, they've opened up portals and they've done things and, and met other beings and done all kinds of things. And not saying that you have to necessarily have those experiences, but you could, <laughs> you know, and we don't know what experiences you're supposed to have. You know, so everybody here now, then we get into meditation and then the idea of soul agreements or contracts with, and things. So, and, and it's different how it unfolds for everybody and who's to say that you're not supposed to have a particular kind of experience and it's just waiting for you to meditate to get to it. Yeah. So, you know, so many people running around, what's my life purpose? What's my life purpose? I don't know. Have you meditated about it? Because you might find that your life purpose is just align with you again and just find you again. And then that takes us full circle to what I was saying even last week. And so it, right now is a really good time to go within and do some of this stuff because everybody has been so busy working and they've been so busy being disconnected from themselves that getting back to yourself right now is the proper thing to do that now that you have the time to do it. And some are able to and some are not. And, uh, and that's okay. I just wish that the, the ones that are able to, that more of them would, you know, that's all. That would be my wish for them. So what's it good for? What's it good for? Everything. It's good for, it's good for inner peace. It's good for, it's good for calm. It's good for giving you the example that even if things are chaotic and full of turmoil, 
all around you that you don't need to join it. That's right. And meditation helps you train to stay in your own energies. And I know I say that an awful lot to people because they'll leave their energy and go, how come my life is so hectic? I said, well, because you left yourself. Go back to your own energy. Stay in your own energy and, and you won't have that turmoil. You won't have that chaos so much. You won't have. So then, okay, then that leads us into the importance of focus and meditation. You're choosing to focus on chaos and then you're experiencing a bunch of chaos. Well, then I would focus on less chaos. Then I would, maybe I should focus on happier things. So we could add the idea of meditation and focus training. Yeah. And just like Crystal was saying a little bit ago, you know, sometimes they'll have music, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they'll have where they just flow and sometimes they just soak. And sometimes, you know, and, 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 and the idea of no wrong. There is no wrong way for you to meditate. So unless the wrong way is thinking that you need to do it away. But you can meditate. You know, there are people... You know, they might be sitting there watching a movie, but their thoughts are somewhere else. Their energy might be somewhere else. They might really, and that's a form of meditation. Anytime you're doing one thing, but experiencing another, you know, you know we'll talk about people who do the mowing the yard meditation. It's very grounding. You're out there, you're stomping around. If you're on a stomper mower, or if you're just riding around on a riding mower, and there are people who can go, oh, yeah, I'm mowing the grass, but I'm really thinking about all oh, my life, I'm meditating on my future and think about these other things, how great things are going to be, how oh, I'm letting my, my spirit flow and I'm just kind of going, oh, this would be so great. And they're finding things to be in excitement about. And that's a meditation, <laughs> you know? And um, so, yeah. And then there's the guided meditations. There are people who think, oh, I don't know. I don't know how to meditate. Well, maybe you should try a guided meditation. And I say, well, what's a guided meditation? So well, how do you do that? Well, you know, you just follow along as best you can. I say, oh, I, I can't concentrate. I can't concentrate very well. So, well, can you watch a movie? Oh, yeah, I like movies. All right. Can you sit still for an hour and a half and watch somebody guide you through a story? Oh, yeah, I, oh, yeah, I can do that. So, well, then you can do a guided meditation because it's the same flipping thing. <laughs> it really pretty much is. And just... Just sit there and, and follow along. Well, what if I can't follow along? Well, then it's simple. The only rule is follow along as best as you can. And if they say, hey, we're traveling down a mountain, but you don't have a mountain reference to travel down, then travel down a river or something. Travel down something else. Travel down some other things. Maybe your journey is to be something else. Maybe so th these guided meditations are only an invitation. They're not even a strict thing. It's not like a script, like a movie, where you have to follow what the characters do, and the characters only do what they do, and that's it. In, in a meditation, even if it's guided, you're still free to do you know, other stuff. So, oh, oh, I don't know how to go down a mountain. Can I go down something else? Can I go down a river? Yeah, go down a river, then, if the river is for you. And so, oh, 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 yeah. We're entering a, a vortex. Oh, great. What's a vortex? Well, it's an invisible swirl of energy. Oh, I can't envision a, an invisible swirl. Well, okay, what can you envision? Oh, oh, I was once, uh, I was once on a merry-go-round. Okay, well, that's like a swirl. Just get on your, get on your meditative merry-go-round and do that, <laughs> you know, and, and call that your vortex. That, that would be fine. Um, so, uh, being allowed to, to switch things up and change things and flow with their own creative flow. And it's not about being super creative, it's just about being different or being more you. And sometimes different is more you. Let's go, oh, I've never been this part of me before. Well, it's always been there. Maybe you should spend more time with you. People say, wow, Dan, you're a pretty strange fellow over there. So, well, yeah. So <laughs> it works for me. Dissertation, Dan. <laughs> huh? Do what? That was a wonderful dissertation. Was it? Yeah. Well, see what happens when you ask stuff. So, and I'm not even an expert on meditation. How do each of you stick to your meditative state without drifting off to sleep, to or, sleep or thinking too much? 
you know, um, early on, early on, um, they said, if, if you go to meditate and you fall asleep, um, go ahead and fall asleep. Um, go ahead and just rest. And I say, oh, I can't meditate. I keep falling asleep. Well, obviously, you're exhausted. Go ahead and sleep. And sleep until you can't, right? Sleep until you finally go to do a meditation and you get through it. And if you fall asleep, great. And if you don't fall asleep, great. See, there is no wrong in that. If you're just doing basic meditation, but there are some meditations when you get into advanced meditations that if you fall asleep, it's the wrong thing to do. And if you fall asleep, then you need to do a ritual when you wake up to separate from all the energies. Um, and that's important, but that's such an advanced state that most people don't need to worry about that for quite a while. Definitely not the first year of, of any kind of basic meditation. Just just be you. You're your best guide. Yeah. I find that if you fall asleep during a meditation, it's because your body and your energy and your connections are working through something that uh, needs to be worked through. That you need to be turned off to get done. Exactly. Yeah. So it's not that you're not meditating and you're falling you're asleep, but you actually might be still energetically working something on something or working something through. Yes, yeah. so you're calling for a change within yourself. Yeah. And that change cannot occur unless something energetically change. So when and in order for it to energetically ener uh, change, you, to you need asleep. to be out of the way exactly. for it to happen. So you'll fall asleep. So your, your higher self or your soul will put you to sleep so it can get that job done. Um, so it's actually right that you fall asleep during a meditation because you're actually energetically changing during that time period. So what spirit's doing in that case is it's putting you into a state of well-being. So yes. when you begin the intention of the meditation, whatever that intention is, and if you have an energy to work through that you're not aware of or not consciously aware of, but your spirit is aware of it or your higher self is aware of it, because we're really pretty complicated creatures. We're not just, we're not just the meat suit, so to speak. We're also the energetic body, and the energetic body is this pretty complex, layered energy thing. And then floating above it, about three feet, is your higher self. So we're this weird kind of energetic with this huge energetic embryonic thing floating above us. And energetically, we're, we're pretty strange looking things energetically. But when we are trying to open the avenues of our physical self connecting to our lesser or non-physical selves there are energetic blockages there are things and there are consequences for working with those kinds of energies and they're not bad but just like we're saying if you begin a meditation and there is a blockage or something to be worked on you've already set the intention that you say hey Everybody, whatever's around helping me with this, I'm trying to connect to my soul. I'm trying to connect to more energy. I'm trying to experience more things. And in the process of doing that, if all of those things say, yeah, this would be really great if you would just go to sleep so we could do that for you. And you might just go to sleep. So what am I trying to say? you're not being condemned. You're not, you're not, there's nothing wrong with you if you're trying to meditate and keep falling asleep. You will do that for a while. You will fall asleep and you will fall asleep from time to time. And even advanced people fall asleep if it's time for them to work through something. Because your higher self, your soul will take advantage of, oh, they're out of the way. Let's get this done. And then next time when they come to meditate, it'll be even better. Yes. And 
and that's always going on. So there's, they'll, they'll put you into a state of well-being, which is, sleep is a perfect state of well-being because you're perfectly cared for. There's nothing going on. You're not hungry. You're not cold. You're not anything. All your belief systems are turned off. Nobody's thinking anything, and you're just in a perfect neutral state, and it's wonderful. But just because you fall asleep when you meditate doesn't mean anything is wrong. There's no wrong. And also, it's leading you in the direction of the intention, and depending on what the intention is for yourself, whether it's uh, discovering more of who you are as a spiritual being, um, sometimes we need to be put asleep just so that we can begin to see other realms and worlds within ourselves. And so, yes, just like Dan said, allow yourself to sleep. Don't say I'm doing it wrong. Know that you're doing it right for you. And then you'll get to the stage where you will remain awake and you will be able to focus during your meditation and you will be able to choose which thoughts you would like to have or allow the thoughts to begin flowing through your mind that are of positive intention and see where it leads you. I know I've had the mightiest meditations when I allowed myself to just be free flowing in thought. Now, now, many people tell you, you should try to have no thought when meditating. The no thought in meditating is the beginning stage. Because a lot of us, as we begin to meditate, we have lots of thoughts and emotions that conflicts with becoming at peace with oneself. And so when you're able to find that peace, that range of no thought, then you're able to allow the neutral thoughts or higher vibrational thoughts to come through your mind and letting them flow and see where they take you. And they may take you in many directions that you had no clue about. And you froze right there at clue about <laughs> your, your, your video froze. So I'll sit here and fill the space for a minute until your connection catches back up again. There it goes. All right. So clue about, what did you say after clue about? <laughs> yes. So basically you begin to allow the thoughts to flow through your mind and allow different yourself to have reaction based upon the thoughts that are flowing through your mind so when i say reaction i mean focus you say oh i want to follow that link or i want to follow that link or that link that idea that intention that thought and you'll be surprised by what you begin to see and feel during your meditations i find that they are very informational when you're able to do that and it teaches you a lot about yourself or you begin to see other realms of the multi-dimensional multi reality that you are truly connected to. So allowing your focus to move as the thoughts flow through your mind in a positive fashion once you're able to allow peace to be there during your meditation. And... Uh, <laughs> It's a I, wonderful experience. I'd agree with that. That's that's a portion of it. You'll you'll get to that part. So you'll you'll begin your basic meditation and you'll do that for some months. It could yeah. be three months, it could be six, it could be twelve. You know, there's no um there's no set time on when one reaches a meditative state. You can reach light meditative states. You can reach those deep. are the first ones. <laughs> the first ones are the light meditative states. Light yeah. Meditation. And those are just the peaceful <laughs> calm, usually. Yeah, the peaceful calm kind of times. And you can be 
out or you could not be out or you could just be in a quiet state of mind and and light meditative states will get you to the deeper meditative states yes but you will um, which i found the natural progression for just about everybody is you will finally get used to reaching deeper meditative states and there will be some that are full of no thought and there will be some that are full of plenty of thought yes and what happens is you'll be meditating or you'll you'll set the intention of your meditation go i wonder what i'm guided to i wonder what's going to come in my meditation today so it's like you practice meditation, you practice making this, this energetic clearing, so to speak. You, you, you practice this energetic clearing, and then after doing that for a while, you, you, you kind of send out a secret invitation and go, oh, who'd like to come to my space? And so, hmm, I'm going to set the intention of a guest coming to my space, and we'll just we'll see who comes. So you go into your meditative state, you go into your sacred space, and sometimes thoughts will come in, and it might be thoughts or signals from somewhere, something else. You go, oh, this is an interesting thought. That wasn't mine. That's come from somewhere else. And then you follow it and go, well, where does this go? Where did this even come from? And so, oh, don't you remember you invited um, Signal? Go, oh, okay, well, what, what is this? Well, who are you? You know, explain as best you can. Oh, you know, with this, with that. I like uh, sharing the recent, um, recent story. I was, I was doing this. I was riding my bike in the neighborhood and uh, halfway through my ride, I'll stop at this park and there's this tree and the roots have grown up around the tree in such a way that they make almost a seat. And so I sit there in the base of the tree and I'll just meditate for a little bit, but I'm usually panting and usually sweating pretty good because I'm halfway through, you know, whatever, uh, an eight mile ride. And so I'm in a, a shape when I get there. So I said, oh, I need to calm down. I just need to relax. So what I'll do is um, if nobody's, you know, around, if I'm just there with the tree and there's no dogs or insects or anything kind of disturbing or, or interrupting, then I'll go, okay, I need to slow my mind. And so what I'll do is I, I count backwards from 100. And if I can count backwards from 100 and get to zero, without too many distractions, then I'll consider myself calm. And if I can't get there easily, then I'll, I'll do it again. Or if I already know I'm in a, an active state of mind, I'll count backwards from 200 to zero. And I've gotten pretty darn good at that. So I can count backwards just about as fast as I can do forward. <laughs> Because I've just done that so many times. I can get through it now pretty easy. And then I'll get to zero and I'll go, oh. So on days when I'm really aware, even though I'm counting numbers backwards, my awareness will still be aware of the birds that were singing, the animals that I heard, how many dog barks. And then on days where it's not very clear, I'll just be aware of the numbers I count down. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be aware of, you know, the rustling leaves or how many airplanes went over or how many horns honked or how many dogs barked or how many people yelled in the distance or if there was a train or if I heard a siren or anything. Sometimes I, I don't hear much at all and other times I hear almost everything and have perfect clarity while I'm trying to get clear myself. And then that's my indication of how I'm doing. So, oh, you know, my counting was very clear. This will be great. So I'll sit there and I'll get into my quiet space and I'll sit there and I'll just start, you know, like we talked about that tube of energy, you know, uh, going up and down. The energies are flowing and I'm not holding on to any of it. And then I'll sit there and I think, mm -hmm. hmm, I feel weird in my back. I might let that energy flow and see if that energy will go away and then just try to get as peaceful and just let and you know if you if you feel anything weird 
just say, hey, energy, can you, you know, uh, wash that away, just take it away, and then just get into your meditative state. And once you get into neutral, once you get into neutral, then sometimes I'll, um, I might focus on something. I might focus on a color. So this one time, this one story, I focused on, on color. I thought, uh, how much, I just thought about how much I liked that color. So, wow, this color's been around. I mean, since I was born, I've seen this color like a lot. This color's been around. But I never really gave it much thought. It's been around so much, I've not even thought about it. It's just been abundant. I go, wow, I never really thought about that color before. And I thought about that color, and then a signal came through. I go, wow, what was that? It's weird. And it started talking. It wasn't a language I understood but I, I was able to remember some of the words. So sitting there and the color went away and I, it was replaced by an image of um, an old Indian, an old Indian guy. And he reminded me of, um, and I was seeing his, his side, his profile, and he looked like the Indian on, on the Indian head nickel. And I'm going, wow, you're like, you're, a, you're an indigenous. So you're an Indian. And he said, no, he predates what we would call Indians. He was even older than that. His, uh, when, when he was alive, he was older than that. I go, oh, okay. And this is all help, uh, happening telepathically. It's like, oh, all right. And so we, we conversed, if you want to call it that, mentally, telepathy, whatever, conversed. And then um, he basically just said he's going to be hanging around for a while. And I said, okay, well, you're welcome to hang around. I got lots of room. You know, I said, this is my life. You can hang out. And so then I, uh, I finished my ride and I came home. And I, um, the words that I remembered... Um, of what I thought were words, and I, I looked them up, I googled it, and I found um, a study of a guy who was studying all the languages of the planet from like the 1920s or 1930s, and all of that data had been um, saved. And so when I looked up the words and what they meant, um, they basically were a greeting. It said, hi, we are like, we are, it was like forefathers or ancient ones uh, was the loose translation. And, and that's who they were. So, oh, they're like the ancient ones. So, oh, that's who that was. So it came to me, you know, oh, this, this, and he's been around before. So I, and I've seen him since uh, this, this Indian guy, this Indian energy, this ancient, these ancient ones. So he's, he was the representative of an ancient collective who had energies to share and wisdoms to share and things to share. And so, so oh, yeah, well, if you want to hang around, yeah, you guys can all hang around. So they've been around sometimes. So that's just one experience from one, you know, 10 minute meditation in a park under a tree during a bike ride. It's just like, oh, you know, have, you know, it's one of the things that can happen during meditation. So you can have your no thought states and everybody says, oh, you have the no thought states. Yeah, you can do pretty good. But what's good about learning no thought states is you can have discernment then of if a thought is yours or if a thought is guidance from something else. And that's another great thing about meditation is learning that discernment, say, was this my idea or somebody else's idea? And then as you study meditation even more, what meditation was meant to do initially was create more space between the thoughts because somewhere through history, they found out or they realized that inspired thoughts come in between your physical thoughts that the, they found out that if you could increase the space between your thoughts, you would open yourself up more to more guidance, more 
inspired thoughts. And what they mean by inspired thoughts are thoughts that are not yours per se, but are given to you. They just pop into your mind. But if you don't spread your thoughts apart so those that can come in, then you could be quite disconnected from them. So, so this is why meditation was so important because meditation of any kind allows you to create more space between your thoughts so that more inspired thoughts can occur. And these inspired thoughts over time have been proven to be fantastic. People are getting inspired to have businesses or getting inspired to do all kinds of things. Um, what's the question? When meditating, what ways can you increase your vibration to attract the highest divine by well that there you go. Just meditating will do that. In what ways can you increase your vibration? Just by doing this increases your vibration. Increasing your vibe, really, it's kind of a weird thing because increasing your vibration is actually a neutral state. Yes. So it's not that you're increasing so much, that you're decreasing maybe your thoughts. So you reach that neutral state, your neutral state, a meditative neutral state is a very high vibrational position. Yes. That, that raising your vibration but then the, there's other ways to raise your vibration without meditating just by focusing on more positive thought this is why Bashar is always a follow your highest excitement follow your highest joy Dan I gave her the um, happy face meditation you know it's, it's a meditation I created for myself wherein I put a happy face on different portions of my body like my lungs, my organs, my bones. Oh, yeah, yeah, the happy liver. Uh, the yeah. happy face meditation. So even if your brain is swirling around with thoughts, uh, whatever those thoughts may be, because your body, you're changing the frequency of your, your body, by just putting an image of a smile on the different parts of your body, uh, it changes the frequency of the thoughts that are swirling around in your head for you yeah yeah and then you're able to even put that smiley face on your on your brain and then yes. everything else starts moving into a motion of a less condensed area of thoughts to a more quiet area of thought form and then your body is able to vibrate at a higher state just to get to your neutrality yeah so they're asking so getting to the neutral state makes you more receptive to divine energies yeah yes yeah they do and the divine energy that you find there is you exactly it's connection to you it's not a something else. It is a more of you. I know that's weird as that sounds, but it's it's an aspect. All right, of I'm, I'm in. I, I finished my teleconference, so um, I think Sarah, you and I like spoke about this. So it's like mostly you trying to connect to your higher self. Is that what you're trying to say? Getting to that neutral state connects you to your higher self this is all this is yeah. all this is a connection to higher self Got so it. when your physical thoughts are out of the way and you have big spaces between your own thoughts when you, you get into a meditative state and the whole thing about learning to meditate is to slow down the train of thoughts so each thought is like right. each thought thing is like a train because and everybody knows how to turn the train on, but nobody knows how to turn the train off. And they find it very difficult. You can't just stop the train. But what you can do is you can put more space between the cars. And as you practice putting more space between the cars of the train of thoughts, then you begin breaking the power that the train has. So it's not able to just hijack your focus the whole time that you're able to separate from whatever the hectic and be able to refocus onto the calm that's around the hectic. 
because hectic and calm reside side by side within you, all right? This whole idea, we live in a dualistic universe. There's a positive and negative to anything, everything. You know, there's the salt and the pepper. There's the light, dark. There's the plus, minus. There's the everything. And so, every and all of this resides in you. So, the, the calm resides right next to the chaos within you. It's just that are you choosing to focus on chaos or are you choosing to focus on calm? So this is why people who are good about managing their focus, the ones who manage their focus better seem to handle things better in uh, tense situations where people who don't handle focus uh, as well will kind of falter during a stressful situation. And that doesn't mean that well-focused people won't also react in a non-focused way and then go, oh, wait a minute, I should be calm right now. You know, there's some circumstances where even the calmest person isn't, isn't calm. Even I'm prone to outbursts of weirdness just because, <laughs> just because I'm weird. <laughs> it's, it's just me, you know, and it's okay. I go, wow, look at all that stupid stuff over there. Oh, yeah, but I don't need that stuff. I'm going to go over here and have a good time. So I still have my reactions to stuff because I'm still 3D being, right? So I'm going to still respond in 3D, some 3D ways. But I'm not always committed to my same 3D responses. See, I might go, wow, look at all that dumb stuff over there. And then I'll instantly go, oh, yeah, but I don't need to, I don't need to latch on to that. I can, oh, you know what, they can have it. Hey, I hope you all are having a great, you know, wonderful, lousy time over there. You know, enjoy your chaos. I'm going over here. I'm going to go do something else. Come on, let's go get pizza. You know, so it, uh, I still might react because I'm programmed to react in some programming. I just haven't been able to lick, right? So I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm prone to outbursts sometimes, aren't I, sir? Wow, oh, look at that. Very much prone to outbursts. But yeah. Moments, but yeah, but then I can, yeah. <laughs> and if I reel it in or if I don't reel it in, and that's part of my journey and that's part of the fun stuff. And sometimes I go, wow, I reeled it in pretty good right there. And other times I should have reeled that in days ago. <laughs> you know? And they're like, wow, are you still on about it? And I said, yeah, I guess I got to work on that. You know, mm -hmm. go work on it, you know, and it's all right. It doesn't, at least it doesn't stay bothering me like you, because we were programmed to be bothered. They yeah. programmed us wrong from the start. Hold a grudge for days or weeks. I know people who hold grudges for lifetimes. It's like, and never you. let it go. It's yeah. like, dude, let it go. <laughs> You're 50. That crap happened in high school. Like, let it go already. You know, sing the song. Force them to sing the song. Let it go. <laughs> let it go. You know, and just, you know, but sometimes they just won't. And I know people that will get mad at something that happened on the weekend and they'll be mad about it again, even the next weekend. It's like, wow, you stayed out mad about that for a week. Yeah. You and carried that like around for a week. That did more damage to you than if you'd have shot yourself in the foot. So there's, there's a thing going on where it, it's really important now to be more energetic, responsible with yourself and not allow yourself to do that so yeah i might i might have my outbursts i might have my freakouts, and that's part of the way that i vent some of that energy and get it off oh look at that blah blah blah. oh man i'm glad that's out of me can you imagine if i held on to that for another two days i'd be nutso man and, and that's why people are nutso <laughs> And they are, right? And I know, so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. But it's interesting to try to apply this higher understanding stuff, this higher vibrational stuff, and apply it to everyday life. Because even if you apply it to everyday life, I, there are people that say, oh, I've mastered this. And I'm going, uh-huh, sure you have, because I know how I've mastered it. And because there is no such thing as mastery. You either <laughs> are able to do it or you're not. There are people that brag, that, oh, I've mastered everything. I can, I've mastered all my emotions. I said, well, look, if you stuffed any of them, you've done it wrong. You can't just stuff it away and hide it and say that you've mastered it. It doesn't yeah. work that way. And it's that because it will come back and bite you with a vengeance. Yes, they will. It will not be good. So energies are weird things. Energies are strange beings or weird creatures. And and. And, and energy is one of those things that it's worked best by not avoiding it. 
that actually working through it is the, the way to do it. And there's right ways and wrong ways to approach certain energies. And that's what, another thing people don't quite understand. Yeah, those energies will literally continue to bother you. They can rip you apart from the inside. They continue to bother you until you accept them. And they, they can sabotage you at the worst possible times. They, they want to be loved. And so if you're not looking at them, if you're not saying, I see you and I accept you as part of me, they're going to continue to badger at you. And yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's not good for your soul. It could become very emotionally depressive because it could even physically manifest and it could be a cancer it could be a, a a syndrome it could be a some other you know physical manifestation of not dealing with that energy correctly so it's always and, best to really take a look at what emotions or feelings or energies are coming into your field of acknowledgement yeah that too. Well, you can see it in people. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. You're cutting out a little bit. Go ahead. Well, yeah, and you're frozen. Yeah, I'm just saying you, you can see it in people, especially the older people like me. You'll see them with the bad knees. You see all these people with the bad knees. You go, why are all these older people? Not all of them. And if you talk to them, you'll find out that the ones with the bad knees had relationship problems or they have they have difficulties managing their, their divine masculine and divine feminine. They had a, a female that gave them a hard time. They had a male that gave them a hard time. And because of that, one of their knees will be bad. All right. And you'll see other people with good knees and say, what's the difference between the people with the bad knees and the people? And, and the people with the good knees had good, balanced feminine and masculine energies. They had good family. They had good upbringing. They had good support. Their families were strong, things like that. And there are some that didn't have families that had strong needs because they balanced or neutralized their energies a different way by not having the energies to deal with. And so it's weird that all these different variables of the spectrum are, are, are there, but some of the people who are having these physical manifestations are people who weren't able to manage the energies well and are still probably harboring and holding on to a lot of stuff so I, I tell people you know be careful what you're dwelling on be careful what you dwell about be careful what you carry that torch for because that torch carrying um not not good for you but I was wrong and blah, blah, blah. And I need everybody to know to make this right. And I'm just putting, you know, I just set the torch down. That torch is killing you. The torch is doing more harm than, than the harm that was done. Whatever, however long ago. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now you're going again. Okay. Well, that's why it's very important to ground with the planet. It's so funny because... Um, talking about knees uh there was the gentleman who saw me meditating with a tree one day and uh he was wondering what i was doing and i said i'm meditating with a tree i'm sharing energy and he was saying well can it do something for me and i said what is that he says well my knees are hurting. And I said, come on over here and touch the tree and ask the tree for help. And he looked at me like I was crazy, like two heads on my shoulders. And I said, yes, this tree can actually help you with your knees to ground that energy. And he, he could not believe me. But you know, when you go to a tree and you ask for help, with anything energetic, it will literally help you with that issue. And most people don't know this because they don't know of their connection to nature and how intertwined we are as humans with nature. 
And so the tree, if you had asked the tree to share its energy with you, to help you to transmute the energy of the knees, will actually help to heal you. Because we are one with everything around us. And the trees hold a very high vibration, a healing vibration. The trees are very healing. Nature in itself is healing. And so you can actually go to nature and ask for healing and it will begin to heal you. And so one way we help to remove and transmute those emotions or feelings that we've been harboring is just by going into nature. And you'll find you'll become more relaxed. Your, uh, what they call that, your, um, your sensories in the back of your spine will become more relaxed. Your sensory organs will become more relaxed. And in the process of relaxing, your emotions, your hangups are being smoothed away. And so this is why it's very important to reconnect to nature so that it may help to soothe your body, your physical being. The meditation will help to soothe your mind, but your physical being can be soothed easily with nature itself. So that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> with the so if there wasn't any truth to that, then people wouldn't go to the mountains to clear their heads. They wouldn't exactly. go out to nature to shift their energy. They wouldn't go outside to, to get rid of, to change their minds. They wouldn't uh, go on those walks of anger to, you know, uh, I wrote a thing some time ago. So the, the best changes in your, uh, oh, gosh, I, don't, I forgot how I even worded it. I got to go find it. <laughs> Maybe give me just a second. Yeah. I forgot what the, I called the people it. Really let their emotions go when they go out into nature. And they'll say, oh my God, I feel so different. I was in one way five minutes ago and now I'm in total peace, you know, at this time. And that's because you've released it into nature and nature has transmuted that energy and frequency within you. And you can walk away a much happier person. And so uh, it, it really will benefit you to begin meditating in nature itself. And I know with all this quarantine business, a lot of us are stuck in our homes or don't have nature around us in the cities. Um, but we can find a tree somewhere <laughs> and put our hands on it. Or if it's too cold outside at the moment, you can still ground and connect just by staying at your door and breathing in the air outside. You don't have to go far if there's snow on the ground. Just breathe in the frequency of nature itself. And it will begin to change your mood and your attitude. Yeah, I, I didn't find the thing I was exactly looking for. But but I remember um, oh, way back in the day when I was much younger and I would get angry and I would storm out of a place and I would go for that walk. And I'd be stomping and walking and stomping and walking and stomping and walking. And then I would finally walk the anger out. And I would finally, you know, I'll, during those times, those kinds of walks um, were the times when I would make the decisions that changed my life the most. And so I came up with this little thing that said, uh, the steps in life that mean the most are the ones you take by yourself. And it's just that those were the words to say that impactful experience that I had in my life. The steps in life you take that mean the most are the ones that you take by yourself. And isn't that true for just about everything that's important? And what I mean by important, spiritually important, is the steps in life that you take that mean the most are the ones you take by yourself. Without a teacher, without a, you find your way through. You feel your own way through. You do your own way through 
So when I began to learn meditation, I was fortunate enough to come upon a recording of how to meditate. Um, and I found it really in the infant days of YouTube and it was on YouTube. And inside this thing, it was like an hour long uh, recording and inside the recording it said, you don't need a guru, you don't need a teacher, you, you do this yourself, you feel your way through, just breathe, just breathe and just focus on the breath. And that was one of the best advice that, that I got. And they say, oh, well, what do you call yourself, Guru Dan now? So I never called myself Guru Dan. Friends gave me that name. They said, oh, you're a better guru than our gurus are. And then they just started calling me Guru Dan, and it, it flipping stuck. And then when I get talking like this, and the guru's like out, and then there's like no denying it, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're Guru Dan. All right. You're, you're, there's <laughs> because we, we couldn't go to the store and have this conversation and get anything out of it like we're getting out of this here. So the, the guru is absolutely in there, and he comes out, and, and this is – so I, there's no denying him, so I, I just leave it like that. So it, it's a term of endearment that just stuck. So I don't claim to be anything. Do I know stuff? Yeah. Does the guru – <laughs> yeah, yeah, the rantings are the rantings are pretty good. Rant. <laughs> yeah, the rants are pretty good. Yeah, because um, at the end of the rant is the solution. Yes, exactly. Even if sometimes the solution is stop ranting, <laughs> you know, because um, getting older, I don't stomp so well. So the walks I go for on my own now, or I have to do it within. I go for walks within and I have to sort that, that energy out within and go, oh, uh, this thing's eating my lunch too many times. I need to stop this. I got to do something with this energy because I'm tired of it kicking my butt. And then I'll you know, try, try to find a way to shift it, move it out, do something with it because I just can't handle it being that anymore. So I have to go for inner walks instead of outer walks. But I do like riding my bike. Now I can ride my bike for distance and I can get out and do stuff then. So. I'll work out all my aggression and stuff on the bike and then all the other stuff. It's just all inner walks. So, um, is that helpful, Crystal? God, did we melt her brain? <laughs> I know it's very helpful. Thank you so much. Okay, good. It's yeah, because I know that's information, information to just process. <laughs> So I haven't melted her brain, but she's in the brain gasm over there. Oh my God, stop. <laughs> <laughs> all this stuff, all at once. Shoot, God, I gotta take notes. <laughs> well, this is why the record button is on. And if, uh, if, if, uh, yeah, well, Sarah can give you the uh, recording. Now. Maybe I'll give it to her when it's done, and then um, she can give it to you, and then you can have it. So anything you want to go back and re listen to and say, what did he say about that thing when he said the thing about that other? And then you can go back and find it and, <laughs> and get it. So that, this is why we record. So let's just have one good recap. Oh, you want to have first, a recap? All for, right. For meditation, first we quiet the mind. <laughs> then we raise our vibration towards neutrality. Then we allow the thoughts to flow through. And then whichever thoughts flow through, we focus on the ones that are attracting us the most. And then we allow the universe to continue to give us the information about those thoughts. Whether they are pictures, whether they are just uh, informational mm. or feelings, Telepathic blocks of information. Uh, downloads, telepathic blocks of information. So that's, those are basically the steps through the meditational process. To reach universal intelligence. Yeah. Yes, there we go. To reach the universal intelligence for ourselves. So, Which is what everybody on the spiritual journey is trying to do. Reach back yeah. to that again. Just out of curiosity, do either of you have like a meditation log or journal just to kind of keep track of 
I the information do. that is do downloaded. Yeah, that's <laughs> me. Many journals, many journals. <laughs> I'm writing in it right now, actually, from my last escapades. <laughs> yes, I started with uh, just speaking them out because it's easier for me to speak. I love speaking. Um, sometimes I would write them in a journal, but most of the time I just tell Dan about it. <laughs> and then we have a whole conversation about it. Uh, and I tend to retain information when I get to speak it out loud. So there is journaling, there is speaking it out loud. Um, and I get to remember them as memories or actual events that occurred in my life that have had a large effect on me. And so I like to speak them out because I get to look at different perspectives as I speak uh, about these meditational uh, information downloads or visions or you know thoughts that come through uh, and usually they are out of this world awesome and amazing and beautiful and I just have to tell someone I, and I'm like a child who said who wants to say uh, what's, what's that uh, game show and tell <laughs> i'm one of those show and tell and then uh he's able to connect to the frequencies that i'm talking about and sometimes he gets visions and awarenesses from the information i give him yeah so sometimes i can give her clarity on stuff sometimes she gives me clarity on stuff and then these conversations go on and then we, we do this with everybody you know so it is really... so say again holly it's so fun. I love doing the same thing exactly because oftentimes when you connect with other enlightened beings like yourself, <clears throat> they, they do have different insights or, or into your experience and are able to connect in that just, just like you described. And it's, and it's um, um, necessary, I believe. It's necessary because you're getting the complete story of what you experience that way. And the more you share it with other people, the more storyline you get. Or at least the more complete. Sometimes it's not more every, complete. it's sometimes <laughs> it's not every possible perspective, but it'll be the pertinent ones for where you are kind of now. Yeah, Correct. Yeah, not, definitely so what's, what's coming to mind now is you know how a diver will have a dive buddy, you know, or somebody who's working out will have a workout buddy or, or, or somebody, uh, if you're working at the same job, they'll have what they, uh, they'll have, what do they, what do they call them? They have a, a work buddy, their, um, the work wife or the work husband, you know, they're so close at work that they're almost like the married couple at work, but they're not, they have their own spouses at home. So you have your work spouse, your somebody that you're close to, so close that you just share stuff with. And then the larger aspect of this idea would be your tribe what they call the tribe. You'll get into a bunch of like-minded people. You'll find the ones that you really resonate with and you just kind of hang with them. And so that's what we've done. We've all crossed paths and then we just stayed because, yeah, we can all bounce off of each other and that's what we do. And then through that bouncing, there's expansions that happen and we've learned that these expansions are important. They're not just frivolous blah. They are actually important spiritual expansions that's going on and then we get to witness all of these things together and we get to see oh you expanded really good over there oh do you see what you did oh you talked to a so-and-so being over there oh oh well they're elemental right and then oh no oh, so your elemental energies are coming up and this means this and this means that and it's really and we can go oh oh my life is improving so yeah your life is improving aren't you glad about that and like yeah all right wow we have improvement, you know, or whatever, or, or we just have a, a weird dream or, or anything. So, yeah, so finding, um, but that, yeah, I guess that the, the, the downside of it is trying to find somebody that you resonate with well that doesn't think you're a fruit loop. That, that's, that's a difficult portion. But once you find some people and start having a little bit of a tribe, yeah, it's so nice and so satisfactory. Yeah, so find people. Or hang out with us or until you find somebody you resonate with more or whatever. But yeah, I, I would I would extend the invitation to just hang out because yeah. that's where all that stuff happens at. That's what. So imagine having this conversation 
every day. <laughs> All right. And then, but we never know what's going to, what, what the experiences are. So it's like, oh, I had a strange experience. Okay, what was it? Oh, it was this and this and this and this. Are you getting anything? And sometimes yes, sometimes no. And sometimes it's so mind boggling that it takes a while. It's like, oh, remember when you had that weird thing last week? Yeah, well, here's what I got on it. I got this about it. And then and it might expand to a whole nother thing, all that, and just like spaz all over again. Wow, this went to a really weird place. Now, so Sarah's over there laughing because she knows exactly what I'm talking about because we've done this repeatedly over and over and over and over. It's like, oh, so that little quippy thing that lasted like a nanosecond that we didn't think was important exploded into this huge, great big expansion that made it possible for something else to occur. And then when you get to see the design of it and go, oh my God, who designed this place? <laughs> right? So... <laughs> Really, should we have a topic one day just about spirit, spiritual architecture? Because we can melt our own brains doing that. <laughs> we, could oh, just, yeah. we could just melt our own brains trying to figure out the spiritual architecture. That's why it's so important, like Sarah said, to be verbal with these things because it will implode. It, it, it will, if you don't get that out to, to somebody who doesn't think you're crazy, it will make you sick. It could. You will get depressed. You, you know, all kinds of issues will, it will form. Yeah, it could change you. It to, has to come out one way or another. It could get you to change your life to go to somewhere that you could be. So, yeah, this, many people will complain that there's no awakened people in their hometowns. Mm. And this is like, uh, we love the internet because here we're able to cross paths with these expanded minds and we don't have to travel to do it. We can just stay home and, and meet them online instead. So the internet's been really, really great for connecting people together. Sometimes it connects the idiots. Sometimes it connects the great people. Mm. Try to be the I great people. I have to say, I've, I've, um, since I opened up my Transcendental Enclave page, there have been a few younger people um, that I believe <clears throat> they're, they're awakened, but they don't understand anything of what's going on, and they've been misdiagnosed as, with mental issues. Mm -hmm. But I know that's not to be the case. It's just that they are so advanced. They're like a fish out of water. Misunderstood. You know, yeah. and, and they're just, and I'm drawing those younger, um, younger, What it's not that, maybe, I don't know. I don't like labels anyways. I was trying to think of like crystal children, rainbow children. Yeah, but the, energy, know, the energies are looking for wisdom, right? They're, they're, they're looking, they're they're trying totally, to put it together, yeah. They're, they're awakened, some of them even beyond me, um, but they don't know what to do with it and they don't understand it. And so it's been an interesting experience for me to, to because that's a new thing for me. I have, I'm, I'm like a first waiver, you know, who fought my way to this point. And they come in already being there and not knowing what to do with it. So it, it's been a, a a learning process um, for me to even learn how to communicate with them because they come from a place I have never been. <laughs> and it's, um, you have to be so patient. So patient. Because it was accelerated. Yes. I yeah. mean, they're, even the way they speak or write is, is, like Yoda or something, you know, it's, it's, it's really advanced <laughs> concept. <clears throat> and it's hard to understand sometimes, but um, it, it's, that's been kind of a new thing occurring, I'd like to add. Well, they are part of the human evolvement, the human collective yeah. evolvement at this time. And so we are all the first waivers. We got it. We got hit with it like a ton of bricks. And they're just flowing through 
these new ideas and processes and uh, internal technical ways that we had to fight to get towards. Right. And there's not many around them who can tell them what's really going on. So they in turn become quiet. Oh, the, yeah. The, the they around them. They get their thoughts are so scattered because there's so many happening at the same time. Yeah. Um, but their brains are made to do that. This would mm -hmm. almost be a whole nother topic just for yeah, a whole. A, that's yeah. Another. Actually, I, I have two, the, the two main ones, uh, Devin and Kenneth. Um, I will try to share again and maybe catch them at a good time. One's in Florida, uh, Kenneth, and the other's in uh, Great Britain. So it might be hard to get them here at the same time. But they, they are two of those I just described, and they would be very interesting. <laughs> For the ones in the Eastern with. time zone in Britain's only five hours from Eastern or four hours yeah. from Eastern. Yeah. So, I'll try to coordinate to get them to join in best as I can. Yeah. Yeah, because it'd be evening <laughs> for one and uh, early afternoon for the other. So yeah, they should be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll try to to set it up. So what you you want to go ahead and use this time and then just wrap up. You want to do a blessing yeah, and um, that's, end that's the recording. Right. And then we'll do this other uh, topic as a topic. Yeah, we can talk about this one on Tuesday. <laughs> okay, so thank you everyone for joining Conversations with Sarah. We really uh, appreciate you liking, sharing, uh, subscribing, uh, making comments. Uh, tell us what you think or any questions that you may have uh, for us that we may discuss here. And, uh, and join us as well on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1 11 p.m. And we're going to close out with a prayer. And uh, Dan or Holly, if you'd like to start, and then I will finish it up. Okay, no. I'll go. No, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Holly. <laughs> Let's see what language I can call up here. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to call on something a little out of my comfort zone for a blessing for all those who hear this wonderful video. Ata ea sa nenama, aikea, shuzirea katiara, eto sikada, ayacha, aika na yikinamosi ikea. Namaste. Namaste. Dan, would you like to uh, give a blessing? No, I'm going to let you girls handle it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'll do one out of the ordinary in uh, what is called Arcturian. <laughs> so let's go there. All right. So. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye, everyone. Much love. Bye-bye.